Hi there and welcome to the first Abu Dhabi Bank Global Investment Outlook. This is the quarterly update and I'm thrilled to be joined by Musa Haddad, who's the Senior Equity Portfolio Manager at First Abu Dhabi Bank. Musa, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you very much. The pleasure is all mine. Let's get stuck in. So yeah. MENA Equities, they've been once again outperforming global equities so far, YTD. Yeah. Um, is that purely a function of oil or that there's some more contributing factors? Well, uh, it's a really great question, um, but there is two aspects of it. Let's look at it from a global, um, not from a global, I mean from a macro perspective, and let's look at it from a fundamental perspective. Now, the GCC currently is going to witness or going to be in a very global, we would say global bright spot uh, with a rapid uh, uh, GDP growth above expectations and ab above consensus. And the major part of that is coming from definitely higher oil prices. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a huge amount of contribution coming from oil prices. And I think what's going to happen is that you're going to see that huge amount of growth this year. And we're expecting also that to continue next year, but at, at a less magnitude compared to this year, as uh, things starts to normalize. But again, when you look at it from uh, um, a fundamental perspective, I think there is a huge amount of changes that happened over the past couple of years, mm. especially after the pandemic. So, um, and when you compare that to global. So there is a huge amount of stimulus that post the pandemic was there. The earning growth of the companies has significantly outperformed the earning growth that we see globally. Uh, at the same time, the interest rates that we see currently in this region is, is the higher interest rates from the Fed is actually beneficiary for this part of the world, especially when it comes to the banking sector. Mm -hmm. So, and this is where we are um, more optimistic about the banking sector at this point of time uh, for multiple reasons. One reason is the interest rates, the earning growth, the credit growth is there. Uh, driven by mortgage, uh, and at the same time, the NIMS non-interest margins are also expanding. So with that being said, then profitability is going to be much higher. Lower provisioning is there, and of course, not to forget that this will contribute in higher dividend payouts. So this part of the world also enjoys a high dividend, higher earning growth when you compare it to global peers. Now, at the same time, there is that risk that people talk about, which is the inflation part of it. Now, when we talk about inflation, the expectation of the inflation over here is about, let's say, expectations around 3% or 3.2%. When you compare it to global, it's around 7 to 8%. So mm. there is a huge amount of gap there. Now, the reason behind this is because, of course, we have a higher per capita. That's, we don't feed the higher interest, uh, sorry, higher inflation uh, pressure in this part of the world. And of course, the higher oil prices will also contribute to that. So in that sense, we don't feel it. We don't see there is a, a huge amount of risk. So all of that taken into consideration, I think the reason behind the outperformance, and we, we, we believe that this is going to continue for this year and also for next year, despite the short-term corrections that we have seen recently. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, interesting. You mentioned the banking sector. Yeah. so. What other sectors, or for that matter, other countries, are you would you advise investors to keep a sharp a sharp eye on? So, in terms of the sectors, um, uh, and I will drill into the countries, but mm. this is where we saw because we're more bottom up approach. So we mm. look at you know companies, and then we look at sectors that would drive us for the sectors, and the sectors would drive into the countries. But when you look at the sectors, for example, I think the banking sector is one. The second one is definitely the real estate market. The real estate is uh, are enjoying valuations are very cheap, especially when it comes to Dubai. Uh, strong sales that we have seen uh, continues to be the case. Um, at the same time, as I mentioned, valuations. The valuation when it comes to some of the companies in, in Dubai, for example, are trading below one price to book. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about that, that is deep value. At the same time, um, um, some of them give you higher dividend payout. So you look at especially when it comes to UAE perspective, you look at it from two different angles. One is the valuation part, and the second part, definitely it is the dividend payout. Mm -hmm. So that's the real estate market. The second part, the third one we, we still do like is more about anything that is related to industries or um, you know, um, um, in, in, the, in the field of um, you know, so, you know, sh cheap carriers that uh, in, in this part of the world. These will also benefit a lot. 
taking consideration that the tourism is coming back mm. and especially to the GCC markets and especially Dubai. So that is and the valuation of these of these companies are really cheap compared to international uh, companies in the same field. Right. So um, I believe these are the, th the three main sectors. The last sector we do like is a consumer discussion. But this is linked to one major factor right now. And we're waiting if that won't to happen. If you remember post pre pandemic, especially, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia has increased the VAT taxes from 5% to 15%. The Ministry of Finance, is there is some news that this the Ministry of Finance will revisit or revise that back to 5% in line with the GCC uh, countries. If that happens, then this is a sector that you want to look into and, and we are optimistic. Not because of that only, but again, the strong growth of that sector mm. is huge. You're talking about double digit growth in that sector. Uh, increasing market share and consolidation of that sector continues to be the case and that's a sector we would like also to invest in. You've mentioned dividend yield so let's throw in coupons and yeah. it's that old classic story yeah. equities versus fixed income. Yeah. What are you seeing, what advice do you have for the people listening? Now for the past two years the equity markets in the GCC and the MENA region overall have outperformed global. Tremendous amount of performance, you're talking about double digit performance Last year, for example, we have made around on the equity side, we made 40 to 45 percent return. Um, um, of course, we had a, a huge amount of drawdown during the pandemic, but then that huge recovery we, 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 we've seen. Um, um, again, the dividend, because of price appreciation, and you know, we still believe that the companies will continue to pay dividend, even higher dividend. Mm. Uh, we're looking about you know three and a half to four percent dividend yield on the equity side. But when you come to the fixed income side. The dividend, I mean, the coupon or the mm. yields are mm. much higher. So we're looking at that point of time, uh, that that single aspect of there, especially in the GCC, it makes sense to start. Not saying that you move completely from equity to fixed income, but start to revisit the fixed income space again. Mm -hmm. uh, look at those companies and those uh, papers that provide you with really strong dividend yield and you know uh, credit rating is, is uh, triple B and above, then look at those again, revisit them. I think it is time to start fishing again for fixed income space slowly, slowly, but it doesn't mean that you move completely from equity to fixed income because still we believe as a long-term investor equity markets will continue to perform really well over the longer term. Mm. So in that sense, I think it's, you know, as I mentioned, just uh, revisit again the fixed income space looking from a, a yield perspective. Mm. Yeah. I'm very sure on the, the Q3 update, by the way, I'm going to be asking that yeah, question again, so please. be, be, be prepared. So. Yeah. Um, in, in closing, it seems very strong. MENA equities are performing as always, and it's been a very good story. Yeah. What would keep you up at night? What's the wha what road wha road bumps, big or small, would, um, yeah. would you be concerned about moving yeah. forward? W one part: the fundamentals. I'm not worried about valuations. I'm not worried about the valuations of the mina. In as overall, we're talking about valuation of 15, mu 15 times multiple for this year, and we're looking at around 13.55 for next year with an earning growth. This year, you're talking about. Um, uh, about 12 percent and next year we're talking about eight to nine percent earning growth next year so from and the companies are very comfortable to to uh, with these numbers and i i don't have any problems with terms of the fundamentals right. now what wakes you wakes up is two major things one part is a undershoot in oil prices that could happen that's the always the case for the gc markets and any you know geopolitics that could happen that we're not aware of it. These mm. two things I can't forecast. Mm. Uh, it's very difficult for anyone, any fund manager or any analyst to forecast these two things, a political or oil prices where they're gonna go. So these two things are the ones that keep me awake. Um, but again, there is one aspect. If you look, go back to the couple of years from the Arab Springs till today, any geopolitics that we have seen was short lived mm. in terms of the equity market space. So you get that strong drawdown in the market, but then suddenly things start to recover really quickly. So, um, you know, if God forbids uh, things happen, then basically that is only for us as an opportunity to actually reinvest again in these markets. But you have to also take in consideration the risk and the rewards and all of that. But again, if these are the two main things that, you know, really keeps me out because it could happen and I cannot forecast them. And Correct. Could happen, yeah. Correct. Yeah. No. Always insightful, always Thank very you. informative. Really appreciate Thank your time, you. Mr. Thank Islam. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.